Hello everyone and welcome to Outside the Blocks. I'm that Minecraft guy and today we are going to be looking at one of my other favorite games and truly going outside the box. We are going to be looking at Kerbal Space Program. Now in this first episode I'm going to show you how to start a game. Uh, we're going to look at the launch facilities and we're going to assemble a rocket and spacecraft capable of going into low Kerbin orbit together. So let's get started. Once you have your game started up, we're going to click on Start Game. And we're going to start a new game. And we want to create a sandbox game. So sandbox will give us access to all the parts we need to do what we need to do and build a spacecraft capable of going into low carbon orbit. Let's give it a name here. And we're going to leave the difficulty options on normal and we're going to click start. So here we are at our launch facility. So a couple of the main ones here we're going to mention are we have our vehicle assembly building and this is where we do all of our construction. Uh, we have the tracking station so this is where you can track um, missions that are currently in progress and this is our launch pad so this is where we will roll out our rocket when it's ready and we can launch it from there first we're going to start with the vehicle assembly building so we're just going to hover over that and we're going to click on it okay so here we are in our vehicle assembly building and this is where we can build our spacecraft now, we'll just quickly go over some things here. Uh, off to the left, you'll note we have all of our parts. And these are broken down into different subsections. Just up to the left here, we have a few other, other areas that we can click on. The most important one is going to be crew, uh, but we'll go into that a little more detail later. In the middle, we have untitled spacecraft. So this is where we can name our spacecraft. So you can name it whatever you want. <laughs> Let's just put in a name here and as we progress here what we can do is we can save it as we build it we also have a file here so we can open and look at different uh, spacecraft that we may have created once we're ready to launch a rocket we can click this launch button here and we can also leave the facility by clicking the leave button on the top right corner so let's start creating our rocket that's going to be capable of operating in low curve in orbit. So let's quickly just bring up a picture here of what we're going to be building. So this is a rocket that I've previously designed <clears throat> and this is what we will be working from today. Um, so you can see that we're going to need a number of different items here. So we're going to add them in in the order that they are in this particular picture. So we're going to start with a Mark 1 command pod. Okay, so let's get started. And we're going to start with our Mark 1 command pod. We have to start with uh, a command pod of some sort to begin with as the anchor for the rest of our spacecraft. So if we're not already selecting the subsection pods, we're going to select on that now and then we're going to click once on command pod and it's going to place it into the construction area for us. And we can use the scroll wheel in our mouse to move up and down. We can use the arrow keys on our keyboard to look at it from different angles. And if we hold down the shift button and use the scroll wheel, we can zoom in and out on that command pod too. So let's move out a little bit here. And again, I'm going to click on it once. I'm just going to move it up a little bit more click once to drop it again. So next we need a FLR20 RCS fuel tank. Let's go to our fuel tanks and we'll be looking for that particular FLR20 tank. And there it is there, FLR120 RCS fuel tank. 
So I'm going to click on it once, and then as you can note, there's these little green and black sort of uh, spheres on each of these objects. So these are the points where they can snap together. And so if I move this up, it will snap into place, and I can click once to release it. So we've got our command pod now, and we've got our reaction control system fuel. So we'll need this. This is for the reaction control system, not for the propellant for uh, getting the spacecraft into orbit. Next, we're going to need a heat shield. And we can find the heat shield under thermal, and we are looking for a 1.25 meter heat shield. And here it is. Here's the second one in the thermal section. I'm going to click on that once, and again I'm going to snap it into place here. So the heat shield will protect our pod as it returns to Kerbin from orbit. Next up, we need a TD-12 decoupler. So we're going to go to the coupling section, and we're looking for a TD-12 decoupler. And it's this one here. And I'm going to click on this and just drag it over and snap it into position here. So the decoupler is a separation stage. So it will separate the pod and the RCS and the heat shield from the rest of the spacecraft as our final component that will be returning uh, from orbit. And so we'll be using a number of these decouplers of one sort or another as we add our stages. So next up, number five. We need an FL T400 fuel tank. So let's go to our fuel tanks. And we're looking for that FL T400 fuel tank. And this is it here. And we're clicking it into place here. Next up, we're going to need uh, number six, an LV909. Terrier liquid fueled engine. So we're going to go up to our engine sub subsection here and we're going to look for that Terrier engine. So this is it here, the LV909 Terrier engine. I'm going to snap to the bottom here. So this is essentially our third stage of our rocket. So this particular fuel tank and engine will be used for maneuvers while we're actually in orbit and also for braking orbit and returning back down to Kerbin. Next up, <clears throat> number seven, we need a TD-12 decoupler again. So we're going to go back to coupler. Here's our TD-12 decoupler. We'll add that there. Let's click the whole thing here and move it up a little bit. So we're going to need some more space at the bottom here for our second stage. So for our second stage, we're going to use FL T800 fuel tanks, and we're going to use three of them. So we're going back to fuel tanks, and we're going to be looking for that FL T800. And here it is here, FL T800 fuel tanks. So we're going to grab three of these. Just going to scroll down a little bit here. So this is our core stage, our core second stage. And let's see. Next up, we need an LVT-30 Reliant Liquid Fuel Engine. Let's go back to our engines. Let's look for an LVT-30. Here's our LVT-30 Reliant Liquid Fuel Engine. So this is our core second stage. This is going to be doing most of the work getting our spacecraft into orbit. Okay, so next up we're going to be doing our first stage booster assembly. The boosters are going to give us our kick off the ground and up to altitude 
um, to, to really get us going and get some, some acceleration going. So the first thing we need is some radial decouplers. So these are going to attach them to the main core, uh, central core of our, our rocket here. So we're clicking on coupling and we're going to click on these TT T70 radial decouplers. And we're going to click on the symmetry button here. So this is going to give us two. You can click this multiple times to add more. We're just doing two here. And we're also going to toggle the snap. And we're going to place these just on that second black band from the bottom. If I use my arrow keys here, they've snapped nicely onto the spacecraft frame. So let's go ahead and go to the next part. So we need 11, we need our BACC thump thumper solid fuel boosters. We need two of them. So again, we're going to leave that symmetry on two. Let's click on engines, and you can find the BACC thumper solid fuel boosters at the top. So we're going to click on that. And I'm going to try to snap them on here at the bottom. Let's just use our arrows here to make sure they're nice and aligned correctly. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky connecting to them to the, the radial mounts. And you want to have those solid fuel booster nozzles close to where the nozzle for the liquid fuel is as well. Because the solid boosters put out a lot of heat and they can potentially damage your spacecraft if they're too far up and that heat is, is bleeding onto your core stage. So next, for some aerodynamics, we are going to select Advanced Nose Cone Type A. That's that one here. And we're just going to snap those onto the top there. And next up, we need some EAS4 strut connectors. We're going to use four of them. So go to Structural, grab our structural connectors here. You can place these anywhere, but I click there, um, there, and click here, place them there. So essentially, oh, that one didn't take, so let's do that again. Sometimes it'll take a few tries to get them to reason. Don't always always connect. So these are going to help keep these parts stabilized while the spacecraft is in flight. That looks pretty good. Next, we need some reaction control thrusters. And we are going to add four of them. So let's click our symmetry count here to four. And we're going to go command and control. And here's our RV-105 RCS block. switch the symmetry back to four. Let's add another couple here, because that counter seems to keep clicking back to two. All right, so these reaction controls, the some thrusters are, are going to help orientate and control our spacecraft once we get above the atmosphere. All right, so now we're going to go into final assembly. And as you can see from the image here, we have a number of parts to add here still before our spacecraft is ready to fly. So first off, we need a rechargeable battery bank, a Z200 rechargeable battery bank. So let's go to our electrical. And 
and here's our Z200 battery bank. So let's click on that, and we're going to drag that and add that to the top here. This is, will provide some battery to power our spacecraft while we're in orbit. Next, we're going to need a Mark 16 parachute. So let's come down here to utility. Now our Mark 16 is that gray one here, Mark 16 parachute. So I'm going to grab that and connect that to the top. So that'll be used for re-entering and uh, slowing our spacecraft down as we come in for our landing. Right, so next up, we need some Mark 12 radio parachutes. You can find them here, still in the parachute section, and we're going to be adding four of these. So let's click our symmetry again. And we'll be placing these close to the top here as we can. Here we go. This is just to ensure that our spacecraft slows down sufficiently as we're coming back down. Okay, so next up we need our OX stat photovoltaic panel. And this is it here. This will just pro provide us some um, electrical power from the sun. Oh, we don't need four of them. We're just going to add one here. If we didn't have at least one source to generate power for us, all we'd have uh, to power the spacecraft is the battery, and uh, you would create electrical charge as you burn fuel. But of course, if you're not burning fuel, you're not creating charge. So there's the potential that your spacecraft could run out of energy and be stranded in orbit. So I always make sure that I'm at least adding a, a small solar panel to help generate some electricity. You could certainly add some different ones if you wanted to. I'm just adding that one there. Next up, um, we're going to be adding some of the scientific instrumentation here. <clears throat> so we're going to be adding a double C seismic accelerometer. Let's go down to our science. And this is our accelerometer here. It doesn't really matter where we add these ones. That'll do nicely. And then next, we're going to add the GravMax negative gravioli detector. And we're also going to be add or adding a PressMet barometer. And finally, we are also going to be adding a thermometer here. It doesn't really matter where these go. Next, we need some more RCS thrusters. Go back to command control. And we're grabbing those RV-105 RCS thrusters. And we need to align them the same way that we have them aligned down here. So we've got them aligned like that. So, and we're going to be adding, let's click our cylinder count here. We're going to be adding four, so we'll just add them on the side of the RCS tank, like so. Next, we're going to be adding some lighting, so let's go down to Utility here, and we'll just add some dome lights, or some navigation lights, let's add some navigation lights, let's add navigation light mark one, we'll add four of them, and just stick them here, just help us see us while we're orbiting, uh, once we go onto the night side of the planet. And we also need a high gain antenna for communicating with uh, the ground. So let's go to communications. And we'll just grab an HG5 high gain antenna here. Oh, we don't need four of them, so we'll go back to one. And we will click it onto the side here, the spacecraft. And you can right click on it and you can extend it to see what it would look like when it's deployed. So let's retract that antenna. So at this point we have our spacecraft completely constructed and ready to launch. 
So we just need to make sure that our staging is correct here. So then we fire things off, things are working in order. We have to make sure that we have a pilot selected. So again, if we go up to this left corner here and click on crew, we have uh, Jebediah Kerman as a pilot already for launch. So if we wanted to, we can get rid of Jebediah, we can click on that X there and we could pick uh, Valentina instead. Click on the green check mark, now she's added. So we now have a pilot. So you will need a pilot to pilot your spacecraft. If you do not and you pick an engineer or a scientist, this is only a one crew pod. You're not going to have full control of your spacecraft and it's not going to fly very well. So let's go back to build and let's check the staging. So if we hover over each section here, it'll show the staging as we go through it. So <clears throat> when we light this thing up, uh, we want our solid rocket boosters to go first, and we also want this engine here to go. And as you can see, as I hover over it, it highlights over here as well. So we're going to click on this, and we're going to hold it, and we're going to drag it down, and we're going to drop it into our stage 5 area, which becomes our stage 4 area. So now as we light over these, they will light up, and we can see that once we ignite the rocket, these two engines are going to go off first. Once we're finished with our solid rocket boosters and they run out of fuel, we're going to want to jettison them, so we're going to activate those decouplers so that's lit up nicely on stage three. Then we'll be burning from our core stage, so the next decoupler we're going to want to hit is this one here, and that gives us our third stage here. So I'm actually going to drag the engine from the third stage down here, and that number two becomes one. So when I detach that decoupler, it will immediately ignite my third stage. And finally here, let's click a plus sign. Let's create a new staging area. And I'm gonna bring the decoupler down here. So once I'm done with that third stage, I can decouple it here. And then all I have left is the pod at the top and my chutes in the final stage. So that's all my staging in order. So let's save the spacecraft here. So I've got my Mercury Mark 1. I'm saving it. And now I am ready to launch my rocket. So that is it for this episode. We've constructed a spacecraft getting uh, that's capable of getting into low carbon orbit, doing some maneuvers and returning some science. And in our next episode, I will demonstrate how to launch the rocket and how to fly it and get it into low curve in orbit and bringing it back down to the surface intact. So thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.